Howdy. We are going to work through some example uh, playing groups. We're going to go step by step. We're going to identify last points to find the unit cell. We're going to look for some symmetry elements. Uh, once we do that, we're going to identify the plane group. And once we have the plane group, we're going to double check to make sure that we found everything that is up here. And I really want to focus on some of the um, shortcuts or tricks or, or techniques that we can use to rapidly identify um, all the symmetry that's there and which plane group it is. Uh, and the good news for you is that I just worked through these examples and I messed up and I didn't uh, I didn't record the, the video. So I'm really good at them. Uh, let's do them again. Um, I will also point out that if you want more examples, I have a website here where we have a bunch of pictures of patterns that uh, are um, examples of all of the different plane groups. So there's lots of examples here to kind of draw from and keep working through. Uh, if you want, uh, the QR code should take you there too. Okay, so when we do this, um, I encourage you to pause before I jump through it, try and work them yourselves. Uh, and, you know, in general, we always want to work through it uh, in this order. Once you've started to find some symmetry, though, use the guide, use use these um, this table of plane groups to help you out because you know it has to be one of these 17 and so based on what you found so far, it can help tell you where to look for other elements. Okay, so it's a great time to pause and work through the symmetry of this first example. All right, I'm going to define the lattice point as sitting in the middle of the brick. And so I'm going to identify all of the middles of all of the bricks that I see. Uh, and this is my net of lattice points. Um, and once I've done that, I can define a standard unit cell as going from one last point to the nearest neighbor. So that would be last vector one. And last vector two would go to the next nearest neighbor that is not, uh, not parallel. Um, and I can complete this parallelogram. And this gives me the primitive unit cell. So that is a unit cell. Uh, it's acceptable, follows all the rules. So I've done number two. Now let me look for rotation axes and mirror planes. And in this pattern, the mirror planes seem to be really jumping out at me. So I'm going to do those first. And I'm going to see that there are mirror planes that are right along um, the edges of these bricks and that are right down the middle of the bricks going this way. And I could keep drawing more, but I've drawn all the symmetry that I need to because I've filled up my unit cell up here. Um, and I can already start to, you know, look down at my table and eliminate some things. And the first thing I'm going to note is that I have perpendicular mirror planes. And that means I can cross out all of the groups that do not have perpendicular mirror planes. Um, I also, I don't see any fourfold rotation axes that that would, you know, lend itself to squares. I would see things that, you know, have that fourfold rotation. I don't see any of those. And I, I certainly don't see any equilateral triangles or, or hexagons. So I don't see anything with threefold or sixfold symmetry. Uh, and that means I'm, I'm already down to just two potential plane groups. And the difference between these two is, you know, in PMM, at, at each of those perpendicular mirror planes, I have twofold rotation axes, and then that's it. In CMM, I have another set of twofold axes. Um, so let me let me go ahead and and look. And if I look carefully, uh, then I do indeed have a twofold rotation axis every time I have perpendicular mirror planes. That was one of those rules we learned in point groups, by the way. Remember, if I have two perpendicular mirror planes, I have to have a twofold rotation axis along it. And so the same thing holds for two-dimensional groups. Um, and then the, the question was, is that it? Uh, or do I see more? And, you know, there's kind of a couple ways to solve this next step. I'm going to show you um, one trick. And, um, you know, remember, I... My primitive unit cell is a diamond, but I see that neither of the unit cells in this case 
our diamonds. They, the conventional unit cell for both of these is a rectangle. So what's going on? Well, the thing that's going on is that the um, conventional unit cell for this pattern is a little bit bigger. It's actually, um, it's not a primitive unit cell. It's uh, a little bit bigger. If I count the lattice points in it, I now actually have one last point in the middle. And the way I redrew it, you know, from that original perspective, I have a half of a last point um, on each of these edges. Um, and uh, so that, um, uh, hang on, there's a there's an issue with this. Did I do that right? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so those twofold, those are twofold rotation axes. Those are not um, last points. So if I go back to my original hearts, again, the heart was what I used for the last point. Um, if I look at this big purple rectangle, I have a heart on each of the edges. That means half of each of four edges. So that adds up to two lattice points. So the, um, you know, the thing that's going on here is that I don't have a primitive unit cell. I have a centered unit cell. So I can kind of logic my way through to the fact that this is CMM um, just from that kind of sequence of observations. The, the fact that I see these perpendicular mirror planes and the fact that my primitive unit cell originally was a diamond. Um, and the, the issue is that the conventional unit cell here is a little bit bigger. It's a rectangle. And, and, and we, it is that rectangle because it has these perpendicular mirror planes. It, it better embodies the symmetry uh, of the unit cell. Um, so if it is this, then I should see additional twofold rotation axes. And that's the other thing I could have done. If I'm trying to choose between this case and this case, this one has twofold rotation axes you know, half of the way along these diagonal edges. And so if I go back and look here, um, those would be basically sitting along these edges here. And, you know, it might take a little bit of uh, reasoning through, but if I, you know, think about this edge and edge, I could rotate that around 180 degrees and see this edge and edge. So those are indeed twofold rotation axes. Um, so the other thing that CMM has is it has glide planes that are um, through that second set of twofold rotation axes that I saw. So there are horizontal ones and there are vertical ones. Um, and I can work through an example here. If I just extend this line a little bit further, then essentially if I think about um, this rectangle, it would translate over and reflect up to here, and it would translate over and reflect down to here and keep going along. And so that is my glide plane operation. Let me undo those so we can see our pattern again. Now, the only thing that looks a little bit different between here and here is that originally I put those lattice points um, on the corners of the diamond. And, you know, the way I've redrawn it, again, the conventional way would be to define the last points as sitting at the corners. So I can't see that. Um, sitting at the corners here, 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 and in the middle. And, and that's fine because all I, all I have to do is just redefine what I'm calling the lattice point. And so the way I've drawn it... Um, the last point is now half of the way along each of those vertical edges, not in the middle of the brick. Um, I go back uh, to my pattern. I found all of the symmetry that I see in the plane group. I know that this is plane group CMM, and I am done. And I can move on to the next pattern. Okay. Um, so this is a great point to hit pause and work through the problem yourself. Did you do it? Okay, we're gonna keep going on. Um, I, in this case, I'm gonna define my lattice point as sitting right here in the middle of this uh, sort of swirly windmill. And I have to be careful um, because this windmill, it's sort of, you know, the uh, each of the blades kind of spins out 
and uh, down, so kind of in a, a clockwise manner. And so I do see another windmill sitting right here, but that windmill, the blades spin the opposite direction. So that cannot also be a lattice point. Once I've picked one of these, I have to only find the points that spin in the same direction. So I'd have a last point here, 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 here. That's about all of them I see um, that are uh, within that area. So, um, you know, I, I kind of see that each of these pinwheels has four lobes. And that is already telling me that I should be looking for fourfold rotation axes. Um, and true enough, each of those lattice points that I defined has a fourfold rotation axis. And I also see one in the middle of each of those pinwheels that's spinning the opposite way. So once I've found fourfold rotation axes, I can already eliminate a heck of a lot of these patterns because um, I can just cross out any pattern that does not have a fourfold rotation axis. And that means I'm down to three options. And the difference between these three is that this one has no mirror planes. This one has mirror planes that pass, you know, perpendicular and diagonally through each of those fourfold axes. And this one has mirror planes, but those mirror planes do not pass through the fourfold rotation axes. So I can uh, look at this. Um, uh, I, I, I got to step back a second because I, I forgot step two, define a unit cell. And so if I start at this origin and I draw that vector to the nearest uh, uh, lattice point and the next nearest lattice point, then I complete out the parallelogram. Um, I see that it's a square that's kind of offset by 45 degrees. And it's really important in these cases that you define the unit cell the way that we talked about. You go from one last point to the nearest neighbor and then to the next nearest neighbor. Because if I you know, didn't do that and I just saw this pattern, I might guess something like this bigger square um, or I might guess something like this smaller square and that would try and work through and I would find things and it wouldn't match up with any of the plane groups. I'd be awfully confused. And the problem is that, you know, the first, the bigger square that I drew is actually a centered um, lattice cell. It's bigger than the conventional lattice cells. And that does not agree. You know, all of these square ones are primitive. That's what that P means. The second the smaller square that I drew is not big enough to be uh, a lattice cell. And so we need to um, make sure that we define our unit cell in the conventional way. So there's my unit cell. Now I can look for mirror planes. And if I call this shape, you know, kind of looks a little bit like a dog bone to me. Um, I see that there are mirror planes passing right through each of those dog bones. And then I have vertical dog bones. And again, mirror planes passing right through each of those. Um, I'm drawing them all over the pattern here. All you really need to do is draw the ones that are in the unit cell. So I have four folds. I have mirror planes. And the mirror planes are not passing through the fourfold rotation axes. So it has mirror planes. It can't be P4. P4 has no mirror planes. Uh, again, the axis of reflection, in this case, those double lines represent mirror planes. And they do not pass through the fourfold rotation axes. So it can't be that one. And that leaves me with P4. And once I'm at this point, I can go ahead and look for the other symmetry that this, uh, you know, this plane group uh, should have. So I should have two-fold rotation axes um, along the edges of that unit cell, which is right in the middle of each of those dog bones. And I can kind of see those. And I should also have um, glide planes that um, there's kind of two sets of glide planes. One set goes, um, it passes, you know, in this picture, it's sort of diagonally through the fourfold. Um, 
unit uh, rotation axes, but because my unit cell is already at the diagonal, those mirror planes are located horizontally and vertically. And so, you know, maybe I can look at this horizontal one as an example. You know, remember glide plane, you reflect across it and you translate along it. So if I look at um, this, uh, this dog bone here, it has, you know, the head sticking over it and the body is on the other side. It would be translated in this direction and reflected across. So now the head is below and the body is up here. So hopefully you can see those glide planes. Um, that's one set. I also have another set of glide planes that kind of cuts through here. I think these ones are a little bit harder to see in this pattern, um, but they're going to cut diagonally this way and diagonally this way. And so this would be a good exercise to try and convince yourself that those R&D glide planes one of the things, though, is that we didn't need to find the glide planes to tell us which plane group this is. And that's actually true for all of these patterns. You don't ever have to find the glide planes. You can find the other stuff, and the the table of allowable plane groups will tell you where the glide planes should be. And so you can you can find some elements and then find which uh, which plane group you see. Uh, and then on that basis, um, seek out the glide planes where we think that they should exist. Okay, great. Uh, so we got another example. Uh, I would pause the video here and work through the pattern. Okay, now we'll work it together. I'm um, going to go through the same exact step, series of steps. Um, I'm going to identify lattice points and uh, gosh, I, I'm going to apologize ahead if you're colorblind, you're having trouble seeing the differences, but there's orange lizards and there's green lizards here. And I'm going to put the lattice point where the four noses of orange lizards are all connecting. And I should already kind of be thinking to myself, huh, four noses that are sort of equally spaced around those last points, that sounds an awful lot like a fourfold rotation axis. Um, and indeed that's the case. So like if I look at this lizard that curves this way, he would rotate around and around and around and then back to the first one. So each of those uh, um, uh, lattice points is sitting on a fourfold rotation axis. And the symbol for that is a square. Okay, sorry about that. Let me keep drawing those squares. So I have one set of fourfold rotation axes here. Now I could keep finding symmetry, but I'm reminding myself I already skipped over point two. So let's go back. Let's define the unit cell. So I'm going to go from one lattice point to a nearest neighbor. And then from that same origin to the next nearest neighbor that's not parallel. Um, and again, if I complete the parallelogram, it looks like a square to me. So once you see a square, you should already be thinking fourfold rotation axes. Um, if you see any fourfold rotation axes, the, the lattice has to be a square lattice because that's the only lattice that supports that is consistent with a fourfold rotation axis. Um, so I can go ahead and eliminate all of the lattices that do not have fourfold rotation axes. And I know once again, I'm back to these three basic lattices. So let's um, let's kind of come back here. Let's find some more symmetry. I found fourfold where all of the orange noses come together. And so I could also say, huh, what about where all these green lizard noses come together? And that looks like another fourfold rotation axis. Um, and you know, again, remember the difference between these three patterns is where are the mirror planes located? And I'm looking awful hard and I do not see any mirror planes. 
But if I want to convince myself, I can come back to the pattern and, oh, okay, so if it was P4M, I should have mirror planes that go perpendicularly, horizontal, vertical, diagonally through each of these lattice points. Uh, th sorry, through each of these fourfold rotation axes. Uh, and that would mean that I would have to have a mirror plane that comes down this way, that goes this way, that goes this way, that goes this way. And I definitely do not have that. So I can eliminate P4M. Uh, P4G also has mirror planes, but they're um, sort of diagonally from one midpoint to another midpoint. They would be along these lines. Again, that would mean that this orange lizard here, it would have to have two heads. I would have that head and it would reflect across and I would see another orange head. And I don't see that. So I do not see any mirror planes in this uh, uh, pattern. And that means that I have to have uh, plane group P4. Am I missing any symmetry elements? Yeah, there's one thing that's missing. There's these twofold rotation axes that are half of the way in between each of the fourfold rotation axes. So that's kind of where those two orange elbows come and touch. Again, I could think about this lizard rotates 180 degrees around here, and he overlies this lizard. So I do indeed see those twofold rotation axes, um, and I am done. Let's go on to the next one. This is another of those M.C. Escher drawings. You know, in a lot of cases, I think he just took the plane groups and he put some animal on there and tiled it around to see what he could make. Uh, so people who are teaching symmetry love to use M.C. Escher drawings as examples. So this is a great point to pause and to identify lattice points, your unit cell, and all your symmetry elements. Okay, um, so these kind of, these are... They sort of look like flying fish to me. Um, I'm not sure what, what you all think they are, but um, I'm going to focus on where the two yellow flying fish, their, their eyeballs almost touch. So I see that here. I see that here. I see that here, here, here. I can go ahead and, you know, again, the lattice points, they have to have identical chemical surroundings. So once I've defined it as having one yellow fishy above and one yellow fishy below, they're just barely touching, then that lets me um, draw all of the lattice points on the pattern. So again, once we've done that, we can draw lattice vectors from one uh, lattice point to a nearest neighbor and an, the ori same origin to the next nearest neighbor that's not parallel. And I can go ahead and complete that parallelogram. And this is a totally acceptable primitive unit cell. Um, I'm going to pause here. You know, we already saw an example uh, where I have a diamond um, that turns out to be a center lattice. And I'm going to point out why this is not one of those. Um, one of the reasons is, well, uh, the, the main reason is that these diamond center lattices, they all have mirror planes that go through those lattice points. So I'd have to have mirror planes that come this way or maybe come this way, and I don't see those mirror planes at all. So even though I see this diamond, um, you know, A, I have twofold rotation axes, so it certainly isn't this one, but I don't see perpendicular mirror planes, so it isn't this one either. So let's go ahead and eliminate all of the um, the plane groups that this can't be. Um, uh, and well, uh, let me let me find some symmetry first. Let me find some symmetry. So um, those orig original lattice points, Again, I kind of see uh, one fish here pointing one way, and then another fish here pointing the other way. And so if I take this, I rotate around 180 degrees, I would see the same yellow fish down here. And that means that these lattice points um, are 
uh, twofold rotation axes. Um, I could use that same reasoning, and every time I have two fish that are the same color that touch, you know, I can take that fish to the left hand side that's pointing up, rotate it around 180 degrees. It's now on the right hand side pointing down. Um, so I have twofold rotation axes there. The blue fish in the middle, the one that's kind of pointing up and to the right, I rotate around, it's pointing down at the left. And then these blue tails are touching. And so that's a twofold rotation axis as well. Um, uh, and so every time I have two fish that make contact of the same color, then that is a twofold rotation axis. So now that I've found a little bit of symmetry, I can eliminate everything that does not have twofold rotation axes. Um, and I certainly don't see any fourfold rotation axes or threefold. Uh, and I don't see any sixfold. So that allows me to eliminate a whole bunch of things. Uh, and I don't see any twofold. Or, uh, sorry, P1 does not have any twofold axes. So that's eliminated. Um, all, of, all of these patterns over here all have mirror planes or glide planes. Um, and I can look awful hard, but I don't see any mirror planes that are going through those twofold rotation axes. That is not a mirror plane. Uh, I don't see any mirror planes that are going uh, over here or over here. Um, and again, that would, you know, if I had that mirror plane, um, you know, I would, I would expect to see a yellow fish that's pointing in the same direction or a red fish that's pointing in the same direction. I just don't see that. So I have no mirror planes, and I do have twofold rotation axes, and that means that I can identify this as a uh, plane group P2. Now, just as a reminder, you know, this is an example where once I found that initial twofold rotation axis on, on my lattice points on the corners, so once I found it here, it would have to be on, on each of those corners. And I could find all these other ones by looking halfway along the lattice translation vector. So, you know, for example, this one is halfway along lattice vector one. It's the same as this one. Uh, and the one over here is halfway along lattice vector two. And then the one that is right in the middle is sort of a combination of halfway over and halfway down. So we, we kind of talked about why that was uh, in class the other day. If I combine a translation vector with a twofold rotation axis, I find a new twofold rotation axis right on the middle of that translation vector halfway, uh, halfway along it. And so I am done. This is group P2. Um, now, if you need more examples, there's an awful lot of examples here. Again, you can use the QR code to go there quickly. Um, they're broken out by different plane groups. So if you're struggling with, you know, if one of these is just hard for you, um, you can go directly to it. Um, or you can, you know, copy and paste pictures, jumble them all up and uh, give yourself some practice problems to work through. Uh, but that's all I got. And I will see you in class soon.